Hello Sodbusters, I am at the Langstroth Hive today getting ready to check and see if they have a queen. This hive has kind of been a roller coaster ride. I've been trying to transition bees from a layens frame of brood and using a handful of bees to start and develop a colony that I could move into this Langstroth hive. If you're interested in finding out why I'm putting bees in a Langstroth hive when all the rest of my hives are layens, you can check out the video that starts out that series here. But in this process, I have tried to get this colony to develop a queen. That didn't seem to go well. I tried to combine them with a swarm that went okay until my queen left. And then following up on that, I gave them an additional frame of brood, hoping that if they don't have a queen, then they would make another one. So it's been 12 days since I added that frame of brood. So now we're going to open up the hive and there are a few possible scenarios. First, it's possible that the original colony had made themselves an emergency queen with the original frame of brood and I just didn't notice her. Maybe by now she's mated and laying and we might find her. Or the queen from the swarm that I added who ended up taking off on me may have returned and so they may have that queen in here. Or that additional frame of brood that I gave them, they might have started making queen cells on that. That frame had a lot of good eggs on it, so they had really good prospects for making a new queen from that frame. So three possibilities for them to either have a new queen or be developing a new queen. So let's open it up and see how they're doing. As I open up the lid, we already had bees here on the inner cover, and so that tells me that they've got a pretty good population to be working, which is good news because I have two deep brood boxes on here, which is quite a bit of space for these bees right now. But I needed that extra height in order to add the lay-ins frame. But the fact that we have bees coming up through here, uh, I take that as a good sign that they've got enough population to kind of work the hive. It looks great, we got bees working throughout this whole thing. They're not pouring out, they're not overcrowded, but we do have you know, one full swarm in combination with the bees we had in here already, so a decent sized colony to start. And I'm just going to go straight for the meat of the matter, what we're looking for, and pull out this layens frame and see if we have any queen cells on it. New queens would be coming out at about 16 days after the original egg was laid. Those eggs were already there when I put this in here, so let's take that down to 15 days. So we could be within about three days of any new queens hatching out. And yeah, they've got a couple cells bumped out on there. So they definitely have queen cells on here, which confirms to me that this hive was queenless. And if they hadn't been queenless, it would not have hurt to add these queen cells. Oh, and I see another really nice peanut cell on here. So as I was doing my hive inspection here, I found those queen cells, and so that is really exciting that this colony is definitely working on making themselves a queen. And I'm also happy that uh, I went ahead and got that frame in there so they could get started right away. Now this does give me an opportunity. I've gone ahead and closed up the hive right now because as I was working on this, a neighbor actually came by, we started talking, and while the hive was sitting here open, the bees got a little grouchy with me. So. I've closed this up to kind of let them settle down a little bit and I may go ahead and take those queen cells and move them onto two separate Langstroth frames. And then I can take these two deep boxes and start a new colony using one of them or just start a colony in a nuke box. But it gives me that opportunity, I need to act fast before those queens start emerging, but it is one thing I could do. Or I can still just let this hive take its course, make themselves a queen and we'll be on our way. So a couple options. I'm real happy now because now we're taking a positive direction after losing our queen previously. So things are looking up. Now we'll just look forward and see what happens. Well, I am back after opening up this hive and finding those queen cells and evaluating the possibilities. Took a little time for lunch and decided to go ahead and try to use those queen cells to make two Langstroth hives. That's not just a desire to be greedy and have more hives, but because right now I have just the one Langstroth hive that I am converting to, that gives me a one in one chance of 
surviving or not surviving through winter. If I make this into two hives, that gives me a little bit better odds of at least one getting through winter. So I'm going to go ahead and take that approach. I know there's a risk to it. The risk is that the possibility that I damage all of those queen cells or damage enough that the ones that are left don't successfully become a mated queen. But there's multiple queen cells there. I think there's a pretty good chance I'm going to at least get some good cells on in each of these boxes. If I leave them all in one box, then pretty literally putting all of my eggs in one basket. But if I can divide those queen cells across two hives, that gives me a better chance that at least one of those hives is going to come out with a mated queen. So I think the reward is greater than the risk of taking those cells off of the frame. So let's go ahead and open this up and make a couple hives. If somehow one of these hives ends up not getting a mated queen, then I will just combine them back into one hive. So a uh, pretty good opportunity for recovery if that should happen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, pull out this Layens frame and just set it aside into a Layens box. We'll come back and work on that in a little bit. And I'm gonna pull out some of these Langstroth frames, put them into the five frame nuke. I have a couple frames of drawn out comb. So those are clean frames, no nectar or anything on them. And that'll give me a good place to stick those queen cells onto and then put those into the hive. So let's go ahead and clear some space out here, get some of these frames into that nuke box. Hello ladies. So that gets that out of the way and keep it safe. These are a little touchy, which is why I put my jacket on. Sorry, I'm kind of blocking things up here, but I uh, want to get that nuke box up where you can kind of see what's going on. So these frames are just empty foundation. We can get these out of the way. I was just storing those in there. Now it has only been 12 days since I put this second box on in order to add that Layens frame of brood. And they have already filled out this frame with nectar and got a lot of capped honey on there. So we'll go ahead and give them that. This next frame was a bare foundation frame that they've kind of started building out on, but not a lot going on there. Another frame that was kind of built out. And on that one, they're storing up some nectar, but don't have it capped like that first one. And then finally, this last frame from this side is just bare foundation that they haven't even hardly built out. So I'm going to go ahead and set these aside and I'm going to cover this back up and we can do our work of extracting those queen cells right on top of the hive here. This will give us a nice little tray to work on and keep those bees closed up. Yeah, we got some good queen cells here. I guess I can't really lay it across, but I can lean it there. So we got one there, one, one, two, three, four, and then a few smaller ones um, that probably aren't quite as viable. So I'm going to focus on this one over here first. Looking over here would be a little easier if I was left-handed, but that's okay. I'm going to take plenty of wax from the back of this. I'm not concerned about damaging the wax behind it. I just don't want to damage the cell. So there we go. There's our queen cell. I'm just going to make a little notch here in this frame and smash it down into the well. <laughs> Gently push it down in there. I don't want to say smash because I'm certainly not wanting to smash that cell, but just pressing the wax behind it into that frame. Oh, so I'm going to pull another one here. I see a little royal. Oh, am I going too far? That's what I was talking about, about potentially damaging these. But I think what I'm actually getting is royal jelly from some of these other cells around it. I'll take a look and make sure I haven't opened it up from the back side. And it does not look like I have. 
And this is why even though the bees are a little touchy right now, why I'm working barehanded because I want to be as gentle as possible. And we'll pull one more. I think three cells will give us a pretty good, pretty good odds here. Okay. I think those are some of our best ones. By the way, for anybody wondering about my specialty knife here, this is not a special beekeeping tool. It's just a, a Boker Magnum <laughs> Tanto blade pocket knife. So nothing real special about that. So I'm gonna take this frame, put it into our nuke here. All right, one more frame for, oh, hello bees. A bunch of bees already checking this frame out. And we've got four cells here, but uh, I think what we have on the other side look a little better to me. Now we've got one, two, three, four cells here that don't look too bad. But I'm just going to look. The bees are kind of clearing out on their own. Looks like there's... Yeah, that one does not look good. It looks a little smooshed. So we'll pull. And these four look... I don't know, a little uncertain about them. So I think first I'll pull, try to pull these two cells at one time. I've got some uh, worker larvae around them. All right, so got those out. They're not very big. Not too keen on those. But when I talk about smashing these cells into this other frame, it doesn't take much pressure at all to really get that wax to kind of bond together. Yeah, we got that one out nicely. I see that, and then this one doesn't seem to want to. There, it kinda, it's kind of holding. But if you do this, when you cut these cells out, you want to go fairly deep, if I haven't already mentioned that. Get down behind it. Make sure that you're not cutting into the cell itself. There may be some other larvae around it, and I'm not as concerned about damaging the other larvae but I want this cell to be as intact as possible with no smooshing, no cutting. Okay. I think what I'll actually do with this frame is uh, make kind of a half-hearted attempt at uh, making a split out of this one. There's some cat brood on here. We got a few queen cells. They've got some honey on here. I'll put this frame with the bees that are on it into my laying swarm trap. I'm gonna give this Langstroth box one more chance here with one more cell. So now I got four cells there. Or I'm sorry, actually five, because there's two right there. They're not real big. These are about the biggest that are left on this frame. From those, hopefully they'll get at least one good one. And it's really kind of up to the health of the queen that emerges first because she's going to try to eliminate her rivals. So anyway, like I was saying, I think I'll just put this uh, lay-ins frame into this swarm trap along with a couple other frames, the bees that are on it. If they make a queen, that's awesome. If they don't make a queen, that's fine too. Take these bees, shake them into this lay-ins box. Now I got to pull off this top Langstroth box. We'll get this frame in here pretty quick so those cells don't get chilled. It's actually pretty warm today, so I'm not too concerned about it, but don't want to take any unnecessary chances or any extra time. I don't have to. Set this aside. Now I'll take my frame with the queen cells and just give this back to them. Now, with these uh, frames that are left, we'll kind of divide them. And really, there aren't going to be many more bees beyond this, I don't think. I don't think there's a whole lot on those other frames. But we'll give these bees to this nucleus. So now we can cover this up. Get this box out of my way.
cover up this nucleus and put it in its, in its new home. Right now I've only got three frames in this Lands hive and that's just because I need to make more frames. My uh, other hives are building up pretty fast and I've literally run out of frames. I'm planning to make some frames this afternoon. So uh, they've got this one frame with the brood on it and some honey in there and then two frames that are built out comb so they're going to be okay for a little while but I'll try to get them full population of frames here soon and I'll just go full circle I'll take this back over to where the swarm was that I tried to combine in this Langstroth box so now we'll wait again and see if this colony and the colony in the nuke makes themselves a new queen. It's only gonna be a few days until these queens emerge. It's generally been my practice to wait about two weeks and then check back for a mated queen. If all goes really well, we'll have two Langstroth colonies that have a new queen. And uh, as a bonus, we might end up with another Layens colony with a queen. Even if one of these fails, I'll still end up with one Langstroth colony with a queen. So I'm pretty, positive about my odds here. I feel like moving those cells over went pretty well. I don't think there was uh, any significant damage to the cells. Tried to be real careful about that. So uh, I think we're in pretty good shape there. Now we just wait and see. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a like. And I would sure appreciate if you would also click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. You might also like this video, or you might want to check out my beekeeping playlist to see my other beekeeping videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.